Okay, three, two, one, let's go. <clears throat> hey there, my name is Lucky Luck Luke, and this is uh, another installment of <coughs> my class pit tutorials. Uh, I'm going to be doing the striker today. Um, <coughs> you can catch me on Twitch at Lucky Luck Luke 2 at twitchtv.com. So feel free to stop by and say hey if uh, you enjoy my video. I do stream from time to time. Um, so here we go. Here's a striker, one of my favorite classes. A striker is a mercenary of the Morigi race, often hired to steal valuable objects or sabotage critical facilities. Strikers pursue dangerous missions, which require stealth, cunning, and expert violence. Nemesis is an adventurer and thief who has come to Arbuta 4 after finding an ancient codex, which spoke of a hidden underground base filled with horrors and treasures beyond price. Morigi have respectable psionics, Psionic power, but are masters of high technology and robotics. All right, let's jump in there. Okay, so this is the striker. Um, like I said, one of my favorite classes. Definitely would uh, not recommend this class for a new player, though. Uh, I'll get into details of why. Well, in short, it's because of her one move speed, her biggest uh, flaw. But she has lots of strengths. So she's, let's take a look at her starting equipment here. Starts with a spear, which is a two-range uh, attack, me uh, which is a melee weapon with two range. Uh, pretty good uh, pistol, uh, rifle, laser pistol type weapon. Uh, has pretty low durability though, which will come into effect into the game because this uh, you probably end up using this for a long time. It's a very good weapon to have. She starts with the Morigi Protection Ray. Uh, which is a uh, pretty good armor, but very flimsy. Uh, it only has 30 natural armor, but it has 100 uh, armor versus ballistics. So like most classes, I suggest you take your armor off for the first few floors. Um, this armor spe specifically, you want to use it solely for when you fight, uh, when you fight, when you know you're going to fight enemies that use ballistics. Because if you get a hit with this we uh, if this armor gets hit by non-ballistic weaponry, it almost always takes durability damage, and it only has 30 max durability, so it will die very quickly. So you kind of want to save this for, uh, namely, robots uh, with um, ballistic attacks. But there are other enemies, but that's generally speaking. She starts with the uh, Squawker Drone, which uh, what it does is, uh, if you put it on, it gives you 15 uh, plus 15 skills to like pistol rifle and all that stuff uh, which can help you overcome some of her racial penalties that she has for using we other weaponry um, and also it gives you vision behind you um, so 360 vision which may not seem very useful but there are a few uses for it uh, which I'll explain now uh, one is that sometimes if you get grabbed um, let's say if I, you get grabbed from behind um, or grabbed in general you can't rotate uh, if you get grabbed, which may cause line of sight problems. Let's say there, let's say I, let's say I get grabbed by something in front of me, and there's an enemy here that I really need to kill. Um, sometimes you get into this situation. So what you can do is you can put the striker drone, the striker drone, the squawker drone on, and it'll allow you to view to see the enemies that you could not see otherwise. Another use for it is um, sometimes um, there are enemies that's like the maintenance master and the moon bear king, where if you hit them, they will spawn enemies out of your line of sight usually you're directly behind you which is can sometimes be very critical um, so if you have the squawker drone on and then engage them they will def they will 100% not spawn their the creatures that they spawn anywhere near you so those are uh, mostly the best uses for the squawker drone it's not the greatest tool considering it only has four charges as well because you'll, you'll usually be using your recharge stations for other more important things, but it's still nice to have. It uh, starts with a, a whole bunch of insta-healing. Um, the Tarka field surgery kit is kind of hard to use, so try to not use that at first. Try to use the med patches first, because um, uh, you, hopefully you'll be able to find your way to get your medical skill up, uh, namely by tearing med kits before you have to use this thing. She has a lot of instant healing at her disposal. She also has the Morigi Med Drone, which actually works double time for the Morigi. Heals two per turn, uh, as opposed to one per turn for any other class. She has the Scanning Analyzer, which allows you to identify stuff. Pretty handy. And she has the Harpy Drone, uh, which will summon a combat drone for you for 
a fairly long time, but we'll uh, run away. So it's great in a, if you're expecting to either die or there's going to be a, a really tough enemy coming. Can come in handy. Can tank for you a bit, deal a bunch of damage. It does about like I think like 50 damage. Uh, shoots twice, 25 damage each. So I mean, it's pretty powerful. And also the mother egg, which uh, if you find it on other classes, it doesn't. It's not as good. Uh, for her, she has 100% use with it. And she also can. Uh, this allows you to mind control, not directly mind control, but to mind control um, robotic units. Uh, not cyborgs. It's only pure mechs. Um, cyborgs. This does not work on. It's only got three charges, but this is an amazing tool. Just got uh, some side boosters to regen your psi if you need to. So yeah, that's her starting gear. So let's move into the pit a bit here. She starts with claws. Uh, Morigi claws is her melee attack, which is actually quite powerful. And uh, you'll be using it a lot. Built about uh, nine damage to a rat, to a bat, which is pretty good. Um, <clears throat> you can check the info on it. Uh, it does what seven damage, thirty-five pen. Like that's that's pretty good. That's like the same as your spear almost. Yeah, it's one less damage than your spear. So it's very powerful. So um, alright, let's go over her psionics here. So she starts with life sense and fear. Fear is one of your greatest tools. She doesn't have too much unlocked, but she, uh, but that will change in the future as you invest points in psionics. So she's actually a really good psionic user. She has pretty high side pool, pretty good side regen, uh, and uh, she has she also has a pretty high side uh, health pool. So what I suggest you do at the beginning is to spam life sense and spam fear for the first few floors because uh, you want to get uh, side drain asap. And hopefully you'll get a free skill up this way. You may not ever get the chance, but your psionics, you have more than you know what to do with generally in the beginning of the games. <clears throat> so let's uh, go ahead and kill this harmless penguin. It's a little thing to note here. If there are characters that heal, usually snake dogs is what you want to worry about. Um, don't at attack them too fast because um, you kind of want the heal to go off and then attack them. So if, if I would kept it, doesn't really matter for the penguin because it's harmless, but um, wait till the heal completes its cycle before continuing to attack the enemy. Because uh, otherwise you're just going to be damaging them and they're just going to heal the damage that you just did. And you're going to waste a turn doing so. That seemed pointless, but I feared the bat. Uh, just for a chance of it a skill up. There's no problem doing that in the beginning. She has, she gets a, she has a very high XP gain level, uh, probably about the same level as the, um, as the engineer. Uh, I don't, I don't remember the exact comparison, but she gets very high, uh, very high XP gains, which is a very good strength. As you can see, we've already leveled, and we haven't really killed any particularly powerful enemies. Alright, usually I wouldn't level right away, I'd uh, try to uh, stretch it, but just for tutorial's sake, uh, I just want to get into the level screen and let's talk about uh, leveling tactics. Um, she's one of the few characters that I actually level power on right from the beginning. The reason I do that is because she's very dependent on her fear, and fear, the, um, for it to land, it rolls your power versus their power. So the higher your power, the better chances that it will land. It also increases your side pool. So what I usually do is I get uh, power to about 60 to 65, then I get might to about 60, and then I usually and then I usually uh, keep pumping up power a bit higher, um, maybe up to like 70 max, and at that point I would go to finesse. Usually I think I stop at power 65. Uh, 50, yeah, 65 is usually the highest I, I get it, and then uh, I get might 60, and then the rest probably in finesse, which there won't be much else because she only gets one stat point per level. So one of her we another one of her weaknesses is that she scales the worst in the game. She has one stat point per level and three skill points per level, which is the worst of both categories. Uh, the upside is that she has high skills in nearly everything. So um, your skill points investments, um, it isn't uh, too terrible that she only gets three per level. It is kind of rough still though. So you only get three points. What I suggest to do is to get telekinesis, redaction, and empathy at the start. So you want to try to get, uh, like I said, you want to get side drain unlocked ASAP. 
Uh, reduction I think is good for the heal and then eventually you get metabolic control. Um, food is generally going to become a problem with the strikers so metabolic control will, you will, uh, will buy you some time. Um, <clears throat> and TK, you kind of need TK Fist, it takes a long time to unlock it. I would probably go all the way till you get uh, Shrap Storm which will be probably near the end of the game but uh, it'll, your TK Fist will get stronger. So what I would usually do for the leveling strategy is level uh, empathy till you get uh, side drain, and then level reduction till you get uh, metabolic control, and then once uh, empathy is where you want it to be, 65, uh, you should stop there. Put your points into resistance, uh, unlock uh, psi armor, and then probably stop there. And then you'll, that means you'll probably have one or two points floating. These last, it's like later, later in the game. These last points I probably put into biotech unless you found a Bordeaux, depending on your tool. Um, and it's hard to say what you would put it at like her last point. Um, probably, yeah, biotech, maybe a point or two in foraging wouldn't be too bad. Um, mechanical is pretty good too. Everything else is just so high that you don't really need to put points anywhere else. Um, a point or two in Decipher could help as well. Because by the time you'll have... Uh, Decipher is good late game. Even Medical is good late game. So by the time you'll have points left over, it's going to be very far into the game. So, um, yeah. That's my leveling strategy for her. Um, let's see if I... Uh, She also has pretty high engineering, uh, which can sometimes come into effect. Uh, her and the engineer are the only classes that can feasibly use the engineering skill. So there's a few items and weapons you can use with that. Not too many though. Um, yeah, so a few of her more of her weaknesses. Uh, she has very high racial penalties when using uh, most weaponry, which makes it kind of a nuisance. Uh, you can miss a lot with a lot of uh, melee weapons and ranged weapons. And um, she also has very limited access to armor. There's only about like six or seven suits of armor that she can wear tops. Uh, so armor is a huge problem for the Morigi. So let's just go uh, do a few floors. Or do a few... Kill a few enemies. Uh, one thing I should mention is because of her one move speed, you really want to make sure you use proper pathing. So uh, maybe I can show an example of that uh, on the next floor. Because the more you travel, the more you consume food, especially with one move speed. So you want to limit the amount of backtracking you do with her. Okay, usually I would explore the rest of the floor. Do not skip. Uh, the floor, but for tutorial sake, we're just going to jump to the next floor. A good tactic to do for starting your next floor is put on your armor. Uh, not really necessary this early, but later on. Put on your armor, start a new floor, start the new floor. If there's enemies that use ballistics, keep it on. If not, you can take it off and then just start fighting. So one of the annoying things, one of the annoying things uh, for the Morigi is when you cast fear, you could either paralyze them or fear them. And uh, if you do manage to fear them, let's see if I can do an example on this rat. Yeah. So if you do fear them, the problem with the one move speed, you can't go run up to it and melee it. Because, well, I got lucky here because it's. Uh, feared enemies generally go for the nearest exit uh, or entrance. So he, this rat's going for here. But often he would run the other way and I would never be able to catch up to it and melee it. One of the annoying things here, which kind of makes me wish that she starts to paralyze instead of fear. But. Okay. So let's talk pathing here. Um, she's pretty good for deciphering messages, pretty high. So um, if you look at this floor, um, this actual floor is actually really hard to, not really hard, but kind of hard to guess. The exit is most likely up here. So you don't really want to go straight for the exit right now, especially early on. Generally the path you want to take here would be, this is a dead end room. If you want it, you could full out skip it. Uh, I would recommend not skipping it in the early floors especially you tend to find a lot of food early on but you would uh, the best pathing would be here 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 the exit could be here and then here 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 if you're guessing that the exit is here which is what I am guessing so this is a very important thing you should probably do on every floor take a look at your map uh, plan out a path and then follow that path if you can 
And yeah, let's take a look at this room in the corner here. Oh, something I should mention. Um, one, of, one of the biggest weaknesses of having one move speed is... Um, let's say there's a really scary enemy right here. For all I know, there could be. Um, you take a step forward. Oh no, it's a rock pile, not an enemy. You take a step forward and everything in the room will get the first shot on you. If the door is open. So one thing you really want to think about doing, especially when you're uh, like facing rooms that are generally have tough enemies, like security station. Um, generally, what you may want to do is um, with the manipulation skill. Um, I don't have it unlocked yet, but when you do have it unlocked, use it to close the door at range, and then walk up to it. And now, and then, and then when the door is closed, um, you can open it, and then you'll get the first shot, in, or first shot, or first decision as to how you want to tackle the room. So it's a very important thing, uh, that free damage that they can do on you from seeing you first from opening the door adds up over time very quickly, especially if uh, there's scary enemies. Like let's say if I just saw a robot in there, you know, I could prepare, put my uh, put my Morigi protection array on and prevent most of the damage that it does. Um, like the amount of damage difference from having this armor on or off when ballistics attacks come through is astronomical. Like, uh, let's say usually like a, on insane difficulty a security th an mk3 light bot can do like like 70 80 damage without your armor on but with it on it does like 15 20 so as you can see it's it's a huge difference so getting getting the the first look in a room is very important uh, i guess before i end the tutorial i'll use my harpy drone just for for funsies so let's use the Harpy Drone here. It doesn't even use a turn, which is nice. And uh, shoots, but does about like... Uh, fifth, uh, it's around 20 damage per shot, shoots twice. It uh, tends to not hunt out enemies, it kind of follows you. Usually, I'm not sure why it just stands there, but right now. But it's kind of dumb sometimes, as you can see. You don't want to use it when there's not many enemies around. Because it's very... Uh, it's very likely to not hunt out enemies for you. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll go through the door tutorial here. Um, oh, see the exit is here, so this is bad pathing. Um, yeah, it's really hard to guess the, where the exit is on smaller floors, especially. Well, I don't know if that's true, but sometimes you get you get trolled a bit, like because they're so close together. I didn't expect the exit to be here, so this is bad pathing. Because now I probably go, I probably would do explore the rest of the floor anyways because it's early. But now um, I have to go. Here, 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 and then all the way back over there. So the proper pathing would have been to go here, 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 here. Possibly skip that room entirely, but no. Yeah, so the best pathing would have been like this. And then go there. But you don't always know where the exit is. Um, so this time we got uh, we made a bad guess. Okay, so we got a door trap here. Generally what you want to do is drop all your items before testing it. Um, because if it's a destruction trap, it will destroy one random item in your inventory, which can often wreck you. So let's say that this item, uh, let's say that this trap is a destruction trap. So when I walk through it, nothing would have happened. So what you want to do is you step off the trap, uh, pick up a, an item that you consider somewhat useless, and then walk through the trap. It will destroy that useless item and identify the trap for you. Now the downfall of this is that th if this is a uh, teleport trap, I would have walked through it and it would have teleported me somewhere else on the map. Um, so you don't want to do the strategy early on the floor if you don't see most of the floor. So right now I see most of the floor and I can see that there's no other trap with the same color. There could be here, but the odds are that are pretty low. So I could have I could safely assume that this is not a teleport trap and do the test. So be careful when you do do test doors like that because it can get you killed. And yeah. I think that's going to do it for the Striker tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, again, my name is Lucky Luck Luke. Catch me on Twitch, Lucky Luck Luke 2 at twitchtv.com. And you guys have a great day. Peace out. Okay, that's that. Back to